Welcome to part 3 of a video tutorial series on electric lighting simulations in Climate Studio. In this tutorial, we will review how to parameterize a point-in-time illuminance simulation for a group of luminaires using Grasshopper. Parameterizing your simulations can help you assess a larger variety of design options with less user interaction time. With Grasshopper open, drag the Climate Studio Workflows template component to the canvas. Click Select, Point in Time Illuminance, and Simple Office Electric Lighting. I will be manually adding a group of components that parameterizes this workflow template, but there's also a pre-made parametric workflow that's available in Climate Studio version 1.9 and later. Let's start off by selecting an IES file for our luminaire. I'll also set up my file name to include our new parameters. We'll be parameterizing the distance of our luminaires to the floor, the scale of the luminaires' proximity to the walls and one another, and the number of luminaires inside the office. In a blank area of my script, I'll add the move component to the canvas. Connect the grid surface BREP to the geometry input of this component. Then add a unit Z component along with number slider. I'll change the name of the number slider to distance to floor with a one digit decimal place. I'll make the max value the height of the ceiling, which is 3 meters, and set the initial value to 2.5 meters. Connect this to the factor input of the unit Z component and connect the unit vector output to the motion input of the move component. This group of components creates a surface plane that is meant to distribute the luminaires across the office space. We can see the surface plane move as we change our distance to the floor slider. The next group of components will be used to scale the surface plane since we don't want our luminaires to be adjacent to the walls. This will also change the distance between each luminaire. I'll add the scale and area components to the canvas. Connect the geometry output of the move component to both geometry inputs of these components. The area component is giving us the centroid of the surface plane and should be connected to the center input of the scale component. I'll then add a number slider and connect this to the factor input of scale. I'll name this scale factor with a one digit decimal place and a max value of one. I'll set the initial value to 0 0.8. Now, we need to add the surface frames component and connect the scale's geometry output to the surface to divide input. I'll connect two integer number sliders to the U count and V count inputs. I'll rename these sliders to luminaire number W for width and luminaire number D for depth. I'll set the max values to 10 for both. Since our luminaires are not actually yet connected to our new surface plane, they don't update as I change the luminaire number sliders. Now that you get a sense of how the surface plane works to parameterize the luminaires, I'll turn off the preview for the move, area, scale, and surface frames components to clean up our Rhino view. Let's connect the surface frames component to the planes as a list input of the luminaire component.
In doing so, we can now delete the two components to the left of the luminaires component since we are defining the surface plane for the luminaires elsewhere. I'll also have to flatten the luminaire component as this dashed line indicates that the luminaires are being inputted as a data tree. Now that the luminaires are connected, you can see them update as I change the luminaire number sliders. Let's start with three luminaires wide and two luminaires deep. Note that this is just one example of how to set up a parametric workflow. Different settings and different components may be used to achieve the same thing. I'll fill out my file name with my chosen parameters and then press run. The simulation has now completed, and we can view results in both the metric table and in the Rhino viewport. Remember that we can turn on the preview in the tag component to view our individual sensor values on the Rhino simulation grids. This run looks good, but let's see what happens when we double the number of luminaires and reduce the space in between them. Ideally, our target lux for the office is above 500. I'll set the luminaire number width to be 6 and the luminaire number depth to be 4. I'll also reduce our scale to 0 0.7. After updating my file name with the new parameter information, I'll press run. Parameterizing workflows such as this is beneficial for lighting designers and architects alike because you can quickly perform multiple data-driven design iterations to isolate the ideal number of luminaires needed to meet target luminance values for a project. Thank you for watching this video series on electric lighting simulation in Climate Studio. For more learning resources, visit salama.com learn. Happy simulations!